Good afternoon, everyone. This is going to be quick, if I can make it quick, because it is 4.01, and I need to be somewhere at 4.30. Oh, steering wheel's dirty. Whole car's dirty. But I wanted to um, call you up and give you another update of the car and then show you a couple of things if I have time. Now... This, if I can show you, hmm, let's see, oh, this doesn't have, this doesn't have, um, that total on it. I should have been more prepared because time's a ticking. Let's see about this page. Ah, there we go. Okay, so you know that I took the car to one place. That's the day that I had to walk home. And um, I'm wearing a hat because I need a haircut. I really should have on a beanie, one of my beanies because it's so windy. I don't want to get an air rake, but believe it or not, I cannot find one. They put them up. I put them up in my closet. Hmm. And I cannot find my favorite eight hook. But anyway, okay. So the first place I took the car to was going to be around five hundred dollars. That's including tax, just to fix the water pump, AC belt alternator belt and the cap that goes on the radiator four things close to five hundred dollars with tax then I took it to another place and I paid sixty dollars plus tax for them to go through the car and they found one thousand nine hundred and eight dollars and thirty seven cents worth of things that they were willing to fix for that amount of money. I don't have that much. And so the guy narrowed it down to a water pump, AC belt, um, alternator belt, cap on the radiator, and an oil leak. I think that's five. I lost track. But those things, that was going to be um, just around $700. I don't have $700. And so, talking with, um, well, someone that I know knew some of the issues I was having and one day asked me, um, you know, how is the car? And on and on and on. And and um, because I couldn't nail down anyone that I know, like a couple backyard mechanics and then my mobile mechanic, this person that I know that I was talking to that asked me, how's the car coming along, said, well, I know someone that owns a garage in Garland. And I had gone there in 2018 with this car and they did all of my brakes back then. Very nice people. So, um, but I didn't think about calling them because it is out of the way and I was, you know, I didn't think it was going to be any cheaper than these prices I got. Um, so this person that I know that knows that owner called, uh, texted and called over there um, last week. Yeah, last week. And... And then the person told them for me to go down there whatever day it was. I've lost track of my days. I think I went Wednesday. And they were going, they had to check all that stuff again. Even though I brought, you know, this paperwork from the second place and told them about the first place, um, it's their policy that if they're going to do work, they have to check through the car. And they don't charge you for checking like your uh, water pump and all that so um okay so I was there Wednesday 
and they checked everything, pressurized. First, they didn't think it was the water pump, and then they pressurized it and found out that it was. And I hadn't told them that I had been other places. Um, so basically, I got the same report, and things got a little mixed up because um, they also called... The owner of that place called the person that put me in contact with them. And and then and then the mechanic called his wife, who's the secretary. It's just a very small place. One secretary, two mechanics, and the owner. And maybe someone that runs for parts. I'm not sure about that. But um, the, the mechanic called his wife. Well, I was there Wednesday and said I needed front rotors. I I did always question it because my brakes were kind of spongy, but I'm thinking that's brake shoes or brake whatever, but I did not have any grinding noise or any kind of dragging the brake. I kept complaining of some kind of noise. I couldn't tell if it was from the brake or from the belts. You remember all that. And so, um, then I was told to bring the car back on Friday, which you know I did. I dropped it off at 9.30 and I got it just after 6. And what they did that day was brand new water pump, brand new alternator belt, brand new AC belt, um, which does not make the AC work. That is still the motor blower that controls my heater, defrost, and AC. <clears throat> and Friday, they put the new cap on the radiator. Um, then they said, bring it back Tuesday, which was today. And they would put on the new thermostat that I had bought the week before. And then there was talk about uh, last week, they're going to fix the oil leak. They checked to see where it was, and it's around, it's in the oil pan, so maybe it's the seal. Okay, so they said it would just take a couple hours, and I could wait there, which I did. That was today. When um, the mechanic came in to give me my keys, and the owner was there, who I know, um, I thanked him. I said, oh, thank you for... Finding that noise, I, I heard that it was the rotors, front rotors, and he said, no, it wasn't the rotors. Uh, we just fixed your brakes last Friday. I said, oh, well, I feel such a great difference, you know, driving, and the car actually really stops now when I press on the brakes, and there's a difference I can tell, so thank you. And I said, so today you did the thermostat and the you fixed the oil leak. And he said, no, we just did the thermostat. We didn't fix the oil leak. And so I didn't press the issue because um, I only had a certain amount of money, you know, to get this done. And I can tell you, they did me a huge favor. They, they probably made nothing off of labor, especially for Friday, because I already know it's a job to get those belts off to get to that water pump. <clears throat> and um, this place did not charge me anything um, like the second place that I went to. I mean, very reasonable for all that they did for me. And so I didn't want to push the issue um, like say, well, why didn't you fix the oil leak? Because I already felt like they had gone the extra mile, especially on Friday. And then the price that they gave me um, to do all that they did is just unbelievable. It is God's looking out for me, giving me favor with them. And, um, and I know it has, some has to do with the person that I know that connected us, but Ultimately, it's God, you know, that puts things on people's hearts. They may not realize that it's God, but I know that it is. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
Now see, when I leave a parking space, I always check and I have not been seeing any, any wet spots. So I don't know. Um, but I will get it checked out. I'll keep checking my oil, of course, and I will get it checked out. I'll get a hold of my friend, my mobile mechanic after the holiday. Um, I still need to put back money for the registration and the inspection and, um, propane or butane for the trailer so I still got some things on my plate to figure out um, but it's all working out I know somebody in one of my videos and I can't remember who it was um, I mean they had a good point they suggested that I post on my community tab my baby blankets that I have for sale I would do that but the thing is not many people check out the community tab, which I find it's disappointing to tell you the truth because a YouTube creator and then all of the subscribers, we work so hard. I've said it before. We do. We work really hard to get that community tab. I don't know how many subscribers you have to have now to have it, but... um I believe I had to have quite a few, more than what you need now. And we as a community, we worked hard to encourage one another and share one another out and, and keep promoting, oh, this one is really trying for their community tab. Can you help? And so collectively, everyone helped me get my community tab. And, you know, if you do go over and check it, I post a lot on my community tab because... I'm pretty proud to have it. When I say proud, I mean, you know, I'm thankful that I have it, so I use it. But I I know some creators that say they even forget that they have it. I say to myself, wow, you worked, you worked for your community tab and you asked people to share you out for your community tab and you forget that you have it? I cannot kind of understand other people saying, I forget to go check someone's community tab. But I, I can't understand how a creator can forget they have a community tab. If they, maybe some didn't work hard for it. I don't know. I'm not judging no one. I'm I'm just saying, um, I notice people don't come through my community tab too much. which is, Which is too bad because when I do giveaways, that's where I'm putting all the information just so that I can, um, you know, kind of sort out who's who's really paying attention to what I'm putting out there. And so, yeah, posting my baby blankets on my community tab to sell and make some money to put towards, um, you know, the registration, the inspection, and propane is a wonderful idea. But like I say, not many people go to the community tab, and so... I guess that's why I haven't done it. Now, let me show you. I got something very nice in the mail yesterday. And I was surprised to get something. Oh, where's the other? There it is. This comes from our wonderful Lori Lee. Look at that. Horses. What does it say? Three thoughts for you. And there's three horses. And um, in the back it says Gallery of Horses Los Tres, which is uh, oil painting, 16 by 24. And it tells all about the artist. And um, inside, so three thoughts for you. For strength, hope, and courage to carry you through. And then Lori Lee, uh, Lori Lee wrote, Above all, faith in our Savior. Happy crocheting, Lori Lee. Isn't that neat? And then, you know, I'm collecting postcards. She sent me this. Custer, Idaho of a mm, Pfeiffer house. I hope that's how you say it. Wouldn't that be nice to live in? Um... 
land of the Yankee Fork State Park, an historical area. Many houses were owned by the mining companies in Custer. The Pfeiffer House was a private residence and considered quite elegant by most standards. And she wrote, this is an old mining community. Some of the buildings have been saved. More to come. I can't find the 1950 West Yellowstone and Yellowstone postcards. Not sure where I put them. Isn't that neat? And then she sent this. It's a sticker. Idaho State Parks. So thank you, Laura Lee. And these will go up on my my happy mail card postcard bulletin board. I really appreciate that. And then I wanted to show you this. This is Big Twist 97% acrylic, 3% metallic fiber, color gray. But it has... Uh, Oh, you can really see that. And then this red is Big Twist 100% Acrylic Color Varsity Red. These are um, from Joanne, but I didn't just go buy these. I, I've been looking through my stash for some colors, and I found these. Um, oh, that red in the camera don't look good. Well, you know what? It's really not a very nice red. I don't like it much. In fact... I want to make something, and I think I'm going to keep looking through my stash for another shade of red. This is kind of like a, it says Veracity Red. It's sort of like a, to me, like an orangey red, like a tomato red, and that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like a, <coughs> hmm, I'm looking for, oh, like an, like an apple red, maybe? Something darker than this one. But this just gives you an idea to stay tuned for what I'm going to make with this and the right shade of red when I find it. <laughs> so why did I even bother showing this, right? I don't know. And I guess that's it. Um. Oh, thank you. This morning, while I was waiting to go to the garage for 9.30, I did a pop-up video in that really neat new Garland downtown square. But I didn't get out of the car because it was so windy. Um, but I just sat in the car and turned the camera to the park. And I wasn't on live that long. But um, thank you for those that came in. That was kind of fun, wasn't it? Um, I'm going to tell you really quick. While I was at the garage, and so when you walk in, it's a really small um, office. There's a love seat, and just a few feet in front of the love seat is the lady's desk, and then a big picture window. But behind her is glass. And another office, and that's the owner's office. And um, and then out back, which I didn't even know until when was it? Uh, till Friday, last Friday, is the garage where the mechanics are. And so I I brought a book. I bought a brought a notebook. I never did get my letter written, and I only got one page of my book read because the um, lady. She was decorating that small office for Christmas, and then she sat down and did some of her work, but then she, you know, her and I got talking. Well, while we're talking, oh, and there was a window behind me that I didn't realize until I saw the reflection in the window behind her. While we're talking, I see her head pop up like this, and I could tell her attention was diverted, and she's looking out that one window out to the parking lot where they have cars for sale and then she's looking up straight past my head up to the window behind me and that's when I looked in the window behind her and saw a reflection of a real tall man walking 
in this side of the parking lot, but close to the window that I was at. Then she gets her cell phone out and she's texting and texting. And I'm already on to this, you know, because, hey, I may live sort of out in the country down here, but I'm from the city back home. Believe it or not, I am street smart. I was raised in not the best places and it makes you aware of things. So I, I'm already, you know, ahead of her. I know what she's doing. She is texting the men in the garage to say, hey, be ready to run in here. <laughs> and um, and with her being so, her attention diverted and her looking that way and this way and that way, I'm figuring out that she's, you know, she can see more than what I can. And I'm getting the idea that she's feeling like some people are up to no good. All of a sudden, whew, opens the door. Someone opens that door from outside. And three men come in. And um, one of them had on sweatpants. And his sweatpants were pulled up, you know, at, at his ankle. He, and he was standing um, kind of in front of me, more in front of me than the other guys. And so I'm just getting a description of their clothing because I'm prepared, you know. And I'm praying, trust me. I'm saying, oh, God, be a fence of protection all around me, all around this place. And... Oh, your name is a strong tower. We're safe in you. God, you're our refuge. I mean, I'm praying. And um, and I'm paying attention to what they're wearing, too. Because it's not a very... It's a rough area. Let's just say that. Um, and I notice he has on an ankle bracelet. And so, obviously, he's been in some kind of trouble. And some people, when they've been in trouble, they don't learn. You know, they'll just keep getting into trouble. And um, he had on a hoodie, but he had the hood down. But um, all of a sudden, he reaches in to the pockets of his hoodie sweatshirt type thing. And I thought, oh, God. Oh, God. Please. And um, he says to the lady, in not such a nice way, that he wants... Now, he's not talking the tone that I'm talking to you in. He wants information of how he can um, finance or buy a whip. She, she said, what? And he said, he repeated it. Now, if you don't know, um, for street talk, a whip means a car. So I guess she didn't know that. I knew it, but I wasn't going to speak up. Um, so he repeated it and she, she says, well, right now we're, we're not doing anything like that. We're going through some processes. If it's true or not, I don't know. I know she wanted them out of there. And, um, all of a sudden he takes his hand out of that pocket and nothing was in his hand. Thank God. Whatever is in his pocket, he left in there. And, um, just about that time, one of the mechanics came around behind me, outside, I mean, and one of the other guys that was with this guy that's on house arrest says to him, we'll go check another place because that guy that said that noticed that mechanic come in. And um, now this is in the morning, and so there's more than just the two mechanics and the owner there. When I went out to talk with them, uh, when I first got there, because the door was locked, there was about five or six guys out in, in the garage. And the reason why the door was locked, even though I was there at the time they told me, was because the lady was in that office all alone. And she told me after, she keeps the door locked when she's in that office alone. And so anyway, um, they left. And that mechanic came in and asked if everything was okay. And she told them what went on. But she told me, as soon as she saw them walk up on the property, she just felt like it wasn't good. She said, um, it's just the feeling that she has from 
being there for as long as she has been. Um, usually if people don't drive up there, I don't know, she's just uneasy with people just walking up there compared to if they had a car and they're driving up there with someone to ask about cars. I guess you'd have to be in her shoes a few times to understand what she meant, but whatever, she had an uncomfortable feeling. And uh, then she goes on to tell me that during the summer, there was a young couple that had come in to get an oil change, and they were sitting where I was sitting, waiting for their car to be done. And all of a sudden, a man walks up onto the property, and he's not looking at the cars that they had out there for sale. He's going like this, looking into the window, into the office where she's at and this young couple's at. Like he's he's wanting to check if anyone is there. And I, oh, I want to say this place is loaded with cameras, which is good if they have film in them. I trust that they do. But I mean, oh, there's so many cameras around there. And um and inside and outside and then you got other businesses around that I'm sure have cameras. Anyway, this man, after he got done peeking through during the summer, went in there. And she told me that he uh, he wasn't talking clearly. He was mumbling. She couldn't make out what he said. All of a sudden, he starts to make his way past her to go into the other office that's behind her, which is the owner's. And she stopped him. She said, you can't go in there. There's no no reason for you to go in there. Well, he turned around and he noticed this young couple on the um, love seat. And the lady told me that the young girl or young lady was wearing shorts. And this man just was staring her down. You know, there's things you can be thinking and not say, but your body language lets people know what you're thinking, what you want to say. And he was very rude to just stare her down like that. And the young girl felt uh, offended. He was staring at her legs. And and I guess she asked him, the girl did, what are you looking at? And he mouthed off something nasty, dirty. And the girlfriend's boyfriend stood up. And this man that had gone in there, he had um, advanced himself to the young lady. And so the secretary is texting, you know, the men in the, the mechanics. When all this is going on, and all of a sudden, um, two of them come around the building, and this man must have saw one in that same window, and he flew open the door and ran out, and they have uh, flags out on the property of different countries, and then, of course, they wear open flag or whatever, and on his way down and out he was tearing down the flags and went running down the street and I mean she's she's telling me this I mean you just never know you just never know but you know God's not given us a spirit of fear the Bible says um, but God does make us aware and we have to be aware all the time of our surroundings I I always am. I just can't help it. It's how I was raised, where I was raised. Um, yep. So that's a little story for you. Now I got to get to where I need to be before 30, and it's probably past that. I don't know. But I'll talk to you later.